What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm so glad that you've joined us. It's week four of the Heart of the Story. It's going to be a great service. Before we get to that, this is the lobby where we just kind of hang out. And it's a very special uh, week of the lobby because this is episode 150. What? Woo! Woo Can we get raucous applause? We definitely need raucous applause. Yeah, yes. we need raucous applause. Today, I also sure. think we needed like um, confetti to pop out sure. at that moment, yeah. some balloons to like come Michael behind our Michael will add all of that in post. Yeah, okay. the extra time we have this week. <laughs> what, a, <laughs> what a good producer. Uh, with me this week to start <laughs> is my friend Hattie. Hi, friend Hattie. Hello, friend David. And friend Michael is Hello, over everyone. on producer cam. And you both have your five timers jackets on. And I feel weird because if you like squish right, there's like a lot going on. Oh, you got some shoulder pads right in yours. There. Yeah, I feel like I'm. Do a, you have shoulder pads? Maker. Nope, just mm -hmm. all natural. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe you or not. <laughs> Uh, can can we can see can we see your emblem? I was, your, I was holding it up. A low. Okay, good. Uh, I'll cut to it. Yeah, if you <laughs> haven't been with us for when was our last five timer ceremony? It's been at least a year, probably. It's been a while. It's been forever. Yeah. Uh, we did a bit um, in the early years of the lobby that continued when a guest was on for five times. They joined the five timers club. Shout out to Pastor Aaron. The pastor of Central City Church, our first ever five timer. So he's not going to be he here won't today. Be here. I keep waiting no. for him to like come in the Two, door right now. Three members of the five timers club won't be here. That's unfortunately. That's really sad. Uh, pastor Russ is also in the five timers club, and he apparently planted some church in Ohio. Can we so. get like a want want? Ooh yeah, can we? Is there one? He has no idea. <laughs> oh, which one? Jokes on him. Not uh, about the church planning, but just about right, not right. being here. There, there it is. is. And yeah. then uh, Pastor Mike. Uh, has a bunch of meetings today, so he won't be able to join us. Well, he was the first ever guest on the lobby. Was he also the first ever five-timers? He was not. Ooh. Pastor Aaron was, as okay. I said, 30 yep. seconds ago. Oh, whoops, Thank I you for sense. listening. It's Sorry. like Pastor Aaron had nothing else to do. <laughs> 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 Pastor Aaron, in fact, would just sit in the chair all week long waiting for the lobby Prepare. to start. We'd be like, I guess Pastor Aaron's on again. Well, we're going to rotate a bunch of different oh. five-timers through today. We have music for but, that. Well, we're not doing it quite yet because oh. I want to hear from Hattie. Oh, I want to hear a lobby memory, one of your favorite lobby. Oh, we started wait. with the three of us because the bulk of the time now, uh, we don't have guests on as much now. We just kind of hang out with uh, the, the people that we normally spend Sundays with, which is the three of us. And then uh, Olivia um, is in sometimes as a as a great alternate for us. But, mm. so but we're gonna that's rotate. a good way to oh, put that because yeah. uh, she's in the room right now. <laughs> so we don't want to upset great. Olivia. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. So could you give um, us a, a memory of yours? Well, I did recently see a photo of us at the fire station <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when yeah, I got to put on the full <laughs> fireman outfit. That was amazing. Um, but it also <laughs> reminds me of the time, I'm not really sure what we were talking about, but there was something to do with fire and a building burning down. And I believe the last oh, like minute of the lobby, we just laughed the, right. yep. the whole time. That was a great but I don't remember <laughs> why we just, just laughed. Uncontrolled laughter for the last minute of the lobby. <laughs> yeah, I'm that not was sure. a good one. I'm pretty sure Pastor Mike was in the room for that Probably. one. Probably. And yeah. yeah. And we just questioning a lot of things. Yep. The whole time. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Well, uh, Hattie, thank you for being a big thank part you. of the lobby. You are also now, technically, <coughs> Pastor Aaron hosted once, but we don't talk about that episode. Mm -hmm. um, and he never hosted again. Uh, <laughs> but you are also our main fill-in host, and you do a great job. Thank you I so would say much. a better job than I do. No. Um, you stress out more about it, for yes, sure. Yes, I do. But, uh, so thank you for being here. We're going to bring <laughs> yeah, in our okay. next guest. Ooh. Oh, well-timed. <laughs> Who, anybody, whoever's next. Come on, Pastor Andrea. There's, guys, it's the lobby. There's no, like, oh, it needs to be this person next. It's very scripted. <laughs> well, what's up, Pastor Andrea? It's my friend Andrea. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. And Michael's here. Michael's yeah. on camera, Hi, too. Uh -huh. Michael, do you have any questions for Pastor Andrea? Um, <clears throat> no, I don't. Sorry. That's great. Yeah, that's, that was really good. <laughs> All right, good. next. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first time, again, Aaron was our first ever sub-host. Mm. It's bad. But the first time that Hattie ever hosted, you were her guest. Yes, and I was. And that is one of my favorite lobby memories. <laughs> I wasn't there when we filmed it. That's why Hattie was, was hosting. But uh, there was some dancing happening. I believe it was the first ever live dancing on the lobby. Yeah. That was great. So that was one of my, I hope I'm not stealing your favorite memory, but that was one of my favorite lobby memories was you and Hattie. Yeah, that was a pretty good yeah. one. You actually did steal mine, but right. I do have another one. Okay, that's good. Uh, There's so many. I know, right? There's so many. Um, but we have played a couple times on the lobby with me, uh, like Sunday school, 
trivia we questions. Have. We something. did like a Sunday school Sunday school would you rather once. Yeah. We did yeah, those were those were fun. Yeah. Those were fun games yeah. and it's just it's fun to show off my lack of skills. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and what what are your thoughts on now, Pastor Andrea, and probably Pastor Kylie, who will be on shortly, I think did the best job immediately displaying their five timer certificates. I'm a little mm. surprised you guys didn't bring them with you, but that's fine. Um, <clears throat> I just assumed you carried it around with you everywhere you went. Mine yours has is, a very specific framed spot. <laughs> yours on my is desk. like beautifully framed <laughs> in your desk, which which we've always appreciated. Um, we've appreciated your commitment to mm. the five timers club. Very committed. Yep, it's yes. very important. Mm -hmm. Well. We'll definitely have to have you back on to play. I'll need to, maybe we'll have Hattie because she's better at coming up with games. One of us will come up with a Sunday school themed game and we'll have you back on to play it. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you, Pastor Andrea. <laughs> Raucous applause for Pastor Andrea. And we'll bring out, oh, there, and there goes Hattie. <laughs> come on, next guest, whoever that may be. It's Pastor Kylie. Hi, Pastor Kylie. Hello. Friend Hello. Kylie. Make sure you were talking yes. right into the microphone. I probably yeah. should have said right. that to Andrea. If you couldn't hear anything Andrea said, sorry. I it's tried to adjust the, the lobby. Fly. There you go. I'm what a good producer yeah. we have over there. Now, uh, this is our friend Kylie, Pastor Kylie. Before we talk any more about that, I have to mm -hmm. give you a shout out because you are the, uh, the crafter of the five timers jackets. Which is gonna be my memory. Oh, so you're okay. stealing well, let's go, it. Let's right go right there. in. Let's, yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. make sure you got your 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 yeah. your reward. Recognition. Your recognition. recognition. Words are hard <laughs> this morning. Yeah, your recognition. Sure. When we first started, you didn't like produce the lobby technically, but you right. oversaw all of it. I did. And and then so then when we first did the first ridiculous bit with the jacket, yep. you stepped up, you're like, I can do that. Yep, yep. So uh, they're, they're intentionally fantastic. kind of tacky. What? Um, yes, <laughs> but I actually Googled because it, it's after a, a Saturday Night it Live is, bit. Yep, it, I stole it so, straight from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I actually Googled it so okay. that I could see what the original was. Yes. And modeled it R after which, the which original. Which was very clear to me when I first saw them. I was like, oh, she made it look like the yeah. SNL ones. Yes. I love it. And bought those, you know those uh, uh, patches for for jeans that moms do when you're oh, a little kid that's, that iron on, yep. you don't even have to sew them. That's what these are. Well, that's, that's what these are. Wow, that's good for us to know maybe for yeah. future things. Yeah. <laughs> these, these are not actually sewn on. What? No, <laughs> they're actually hot melt that's glued the, on. What? That's the best part. <laughs> Man, just <laughs> devastation around the room yes. as they're all realizing a truth about their jacket. But I did use the, <clears throat> um, the, the, like the special uh, stitch on the sewing machine to make it look yes. like right. it's embroidered. Which is fantastic. Over the Sharpie. Because <laughs> if you do Sharpie, oh. it makes it look even darker. So. That's very nice. impressive. And if you'll notice, because we had different colors in those patch kits, sure. the women's are all blue. Yep. And the men's are uh, shades of like white, that's very cream. Impressive. Can we get another rock as applause for Pastor Kylie? Tan. That's, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> But yeah, no, thank Sorry. <laughs> thanks for making sure we can hear it. <laughs> I had this set up specific. Right, right. Our high production quality here yeah, in the lobby. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, the cool. first one, I was going to say, the first one just happened to be right in the mix that we had the blue one for the women's, sure. and then it just became a thing. So yeah. it's like, we gotta who, gotta keep it. Who was the first woman in the five timers? Was it you? Were you the first woman? I was don't know. Hattie? So it must have been, you I must have been the first been woman me. in the Five Timers Club. It might have been. Yep. So yeah. congratulations well, on that. Yes, thank you. It's a big deal. You, yeah. at the time, you were the only, was Andrea a pastor at the time? Uh, in process, yeah. In yeah. process, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just couldn't yeah. remember. Yeah, because she, yeah, she should have been, I think she was licensed and everything. Yeah. Well, time, congratulations so. on being a pastor at that point. Yeah. Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the jackets uh, were always my favorite part of the Five Timers Club. They're super fancy, really nice. We spent a lot of money on them, um, but we will always be thankful for you. <laughs> and with, all with the, the women's, we were pairing, uh, comparing, we all have the squishy shoulder pads. Do you have pad the shoulder thing. pads too? I do. That's fantastic. I do. Oh, oh. Olivia well, does. Well, we'll talk about that here in a minute. We probably yeah. do need to move on yep. to our next guest. Yep. Thank you, Pastor Kylie, for yep. being here. Let's get raucous applause for Pastor Kylie. Yeah. Next guest, come on out. It's Pastor Jordan. Wow, you're just nailing it over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Pastor Jordan. Well, hello. 
What what do I, I have for time head? just to uh, for my own we're brain? At nine minutes and thirty seconds. Okay. Ooh. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna move along here. You, you can adjust the microphone if you need to, Jordan. I think I'm good. I'll just I slouch think you a just, little bit. Just hunch. <laughs> then soon your neck will feel like mine does. Oh, By the way, if you're watching the lobby and you're wondering why does David keep turning like this when he moves, it's because I kind of threw my back slash neck out and it. I it, hate it when you throw everything the back hurts slash when neck. you're old. I'm it's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pastor Jordan, welcome to the thank lobby. You, thank my you. Friend, my friend Jordan, uh, would you like to share a memory of the lobby here? Um, yeah, but before the memory, I'd like oh to know oh that oh um, no. I was a five-timer, oh no. if you remember, uh, slightly before Hattie, and now she's been on every week, and so <laughs> I've realized that not only am I not a five-timer uh, or a regular anymore, I'm something below alternate, oh, so well, that sure. makes me feel pretty cool. <laughs> Congratulations. Wait, wrong one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my favorite memory, I think, was we had Hot Dish Month. Yeah. Month. Oh, yeah, we did. And uh, when it was my turn to be the guest, uh, I picked out the hot dish, but it was my favorite hot dish that my mom made. And while everyone else was talking, I just ate the hot dish, <laughs> I think, for the whole episode and didn't do anything else. <laughs> That is accurate. Yeah, that's 100% accurate. I believe Pastor Kylie made us a hot dish for Hot Dish Month, correct? You made one. And did you? Ha- oh, yeah, Hattie a made one live hot dish? in person. That was an interesting move. And then That's our, pretty bold. And well, that's what yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, we had the same hot the, dish. <laughs> we had Kylie on the week before, I think. And then Jordan, we we walk, we like finish recording, and Jordan goes, "Well, that's the same hot dish that I'm bringing next week." We're like, all right, it's got a different name, so we'll just go with it. Yeah, and that's They're when all we the came same. up with cream of everything soup. That is when we came up with cream and of now everything we should soup. Probably, uh, should we go insert to cut to the commercial? Okay, we're gonna cut to a commercial that we recorded. <laughs> we recorded it for the New Hope Christmas special. If you didn't watch the New Hope Christmas special, definitely go watch that. It's on our YouTube channel. But we're gonna cut to a commercial right now. Oh, hello there. I'm your hot dish hero, and I have a product for you. Do you ever find yourself not sure what cream of something to put into your hot dish? There's so many choices. Mushroom, celery, chicken, pretzel, all of them are out there. Well, we have a product that will fix your problem. New Hope's Cream of Everything Soup. Buy yours today. And we're back! Hey, did you play music? I yes. didn't even hear it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I was yelling too loud. Well, thank you for joining with that commercial. I wanted to talk with Jordan, too, but it was too good of a transition <laughs> to go that way. But he ate lutefisk that Pastor Kylie microwaved. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. I watched that episode last week, um, and I could still, like, smell and taste how bad that was. Like, and you can see it. Kylie brings it in and basically just chucks it at us and just wants no part of it. And I'm sure the kitchen smelled really, really oh, good after that. It smelled that. so bad. I think you didn't do it in the office, right? You did it in the actual kitchen? I think you did it in the office. Oh, man. Yeah, Brutal. Well, uh, so. yeah, we, we don't have any lutefisk today, so we got rid of Jordan. But I've always, <laughs> I, I'm, the other thing I was going to talk about with Jordan is when he first started coming on, we would talk about his shoes a lot. Because oh. Pastor Jordan has lots of cool yep. shoes, and we would mm-hmm. always discuss what shoes he was wearing. Yeah. But now we are joined by the star of the Cream of Everything Soup commercial, <laughs> our, fr- our friend Olivia. What's hello, up? Hello. What's up, Olivia? The original producer mm-hmm, yeah. of the lobby, which we had a bit that probably no one but us knew about. Yep. But we would refer to the producer and never talk about who she was. Never knew. And then we unveiled it. We did. In the office episode. That was a really good episode. Of the lobby, which was really good. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bye. We agree. <laughs> Uh, do you fan. have a memory? Do you have a favorite memory of the Oh, well, first I'd like to apologize for not having cool shoes like Jordan. Right. Yeah, yeah. sorry about we, that. We forgive you. Um, I'd also like to say... I don't know if say, Jordan forgives you, but the rest... Yeah, Jordan doesn't forgive you. <laughs> my bad. Um, I, I'd also like to say I don't have shoulder pads on my jacket. No um, shoulder pads. Confirmed. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that's very... That deserves it. Um, my favorite memory, though... I have a lot of like good memories. This was hard to choose. I think one of my favorites, though, was when I was the producer. and um, Well, I was one of them, at least. And it was when Pastor Aaron got um, into the Five Timers Club. Yeah, and we had his family uh, here to surprise <laughs> him. We had our, our ex-mayor, Ward Kozer, yep. present, his certificate. Uh, present it to him. And it was that just was a, really, a, f- a really fun episode to that do. That was fun. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Uh, yeah, that was a really good one. It we was. had last summer. Hattie mentioned it when she talked about the fire station. Mm-hmm. But when we couldn't film here because right. of all the construction going on, 
and we were just all over the place filming everywhere and it was stressful and terrible at times but it was also really fun, it was so fun. Uh, it was pretty fun. all the different cool different places we got to yeah. film i'm still sad that the barbecue place was never open at like nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> while we were filming because we could smell it, it was, yeah. but not eat it, yeah. which was sad. That was probably the hardest part. Yeah. Michael, do you have a, a memory real quick before we head into the service? <coughs> I didn't even think about it because I'm the producer today. Right. Well, uh, Michael doesn't get to share a memory. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> if you have one. Uh, all summer <coughs> long was really fun yeah. this past summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I, yeah. Well, memories. I want to thank uh, everybody in the room because the lobby is just like goof around fun time. But I know that a lot of you and a lot of people that I've talked to um, the lobby is one of the things that's really connected you to New Hope whether it was when you were first connecting with New Hope or because you're not here and you kind of got to know us and our personalities a little bit more but that's the whole point of the lobby is just to hang out and connect with you as people um, before before the service gets started like we would if we were in a real building so thank you for always joining us thanks to our super fans out there who made sure to count <laughs> for us so we knew that this was episode 150 because we never definitely wouldn't have known otherwise um, and then thanks to Pastor Mike as well who's not here but he named it the lobby on the first ever mm -hmm. episode of the lobby we didn't have a name for it at all. Pastor Mike and I were sitting there already filming, and he goes, <laughs> we'll call it The Lobby. And I was like, that's a fantastic name for the show. And then we got a theme song and a, and a picture logo. or whatever. Logo, yeah. So anyway, we love all of you so much. We have a really, really great service day, some awesome worship, a great message from Pastor Mike. We will see you in just a minute. Happy Palm Sunday to everyone. We are diving into week four of the heart of the story and we are so excited to learn more about Jesus and the New Testament. Yes, it's going to be so good as we count down to Easter. It's ah, coming up very, very quickly. So uh, we want to give a special shout out to those of you, maybe you're newer to New Hope here, maybe this is your first time. We want to give a special welcome to you. Olivia has a special whoop whoop. Whoop whoop. Yeah, that was great. That was great. We are Thank so you. glad that you're here. Uh, if this is your first time, we really encourage you. This is our church family. We would love to get to know your name. Put that in the chat box right now let us know where you're joining uh, from maybe you're in a place where there's actual palms we are not there it's grab those cold, it's around. cold outside yeah go pick them right now <laughs> uh, we've got a great time of worship planned for us today so let's go and worship together church Just 
Well, hey again, church, we are so glad that you were with us today. We really hope that you enjoyed that time of worship together. And that was one of my favorite part of the messages or the time of worship, and that is to chat in the chat box. Yes. It's a great time right now to click the uh, chat and just let us know how you're doing, how your day has been, uh, maybe what your name is. We would love to be able to just engage with you in the chat right now. So make sure you do that. And in just a moment, Pastor Mike will be here. He's got a great message planned for us today. And if you are joining and you've got little kids with you, like preschool, elementary, and younger, uh, make sure you click the link that's in the chat right now. There's a special message from Pastor Anna, Pastor Andrea that is just for them. Always so good, always mm -hmm. so fun. And another great way that we can engage with you guys is by you filling out that Connect card. Ooh, yes. The easiest way to find that is clicking the link in the chat um, and filling that out for us. We'd love to engage with you that way. Uh, share with us your prayers, your mm -hmm. praises. We love to connect and pray over you every week yes. um, and just lift you up that way. So uh, go ahead and fill those out now. Yes, and for those of you that this is your church home, you join with us uh, most weeks and worshiping and praising. Uh, this is our time to give back to God uh, His tithes and our offerings. And a way that you can do that also in the chat right now, there's a, bu a button for our giving. And if you give regularly through New Hope, we just want to say thank you. You allow us to continue to do our ministry, which, which helps lost people be found all over the United States around the world. So thank you for that. And let's take that time to worship God by giving back our offerings today. Let's pray. Dear God, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to gather together and learn more about you no matter where we're at. And we uh, want to lift up every single person who's joining us today. We thank you for each of them. And I just pray that you open uh, up all of our hearts and our minds as the message is uh, going to start here soon. And we want to lift up Pastor Mike, and I just pray that you speak through him and um, just allow us to hear what you have for us today, God. Uh, we ask all these things in your name, God. Amen. Hey, New Hope, it is Easter week, and if you haven't been thinking about it yet, I want you to think about it right now. Who are you going to invite to experience Easter with you? If you can't make it to an in-person gathering, why not have an in-person gathering right where you are? You can put New Hope's Easter experience up on a big screen, whatever that looks like. Jump in the chat right now, ask how to do that. Our team will help you how to do that and invite friends, family, whoever needs to discover Jesus because it's all going to be about helping you go deeper in your walk with Jesus and even more, more importantly, to help your friends who don't know Jesus yet discover that the resurrection can make a difference today. Now, it's Easter next week. Invite someone. And today is the first day of Easter week. It is Palm Sunday. So grab your books, page 363. If you don't have a book, it's Mark chapter 11 in your Bibles. Here's what it says. Happened on that Palm, Palm Sunday. Many people spread their cloaks on the road. This is in Jerusalem. While others spread branches they had cut in the fields, those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. That word Hosanna literally means save or save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. We talked a couple weeks ago about what it means to means when the Bible talks about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and they asked, if you've got your books, if you've got your Bibles, underline, circle, highlight these three words. Who is this? Can you say those three words with me wherever you are? Just to cement them in our heads. Who is this? Let's get a lower story perspective here. This is the final week 
of Jesus' ministry, the week that all history and all of heaven have been preparing for, the week that would lead to the cross and to the tomb. And Jesus rides into the capital city of Israel, his chosen people, on a cult. Now remember, Jerusalem was an occupied city. They were under Roman oppression. They were under the thumb of the Roman Empire. They'd experienced random executions and beatings and high taxation, and all of that was aimed at keeping them under control. This was a city looking looking to be free from oppression. These were a people who saw Jesus as the potential military savior and deliverer. And so the crowds welcomed him. They'd seen him do things. They'd heard his teaching. They knew, as we talked about last week, that this was the potential of God in the middle of us. And when he came into the city, it says, let me put it back on the screen, the whole city asked one question, who is this? Who is this? We need to go from lower story to my story. Because this question, who is this? This question is repeated in various forms from cover to cover through the Bible. But in the week leading up to Easter, this final week, this question is repeated with greater frequency. And as you read this week, especially in chapter 24 or chapter 25, or as you read the final chapters of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see this question asked in different ways. And the way you answer this question, even though you may think you've got the answer, I want us, I want us to think about this more deeply today. The way you answer this question affects your worldview. It affects every choice that you make. It affects every relationship you have. And this question that the people asked 2,000 years ago is a question we still need to ask in our story. So this is where the story of 2,000 years ago intersects our story. And so here's our My Story question. Who is this man? Who is this man? the only question that matters. And this week, as you read through the events of Easter, you'll see this question repeated. You'll see the religious people asking it and trying to trap him into saying something, saying some claims so that they can do away with him. They talk about taxes. They talk about theology. They talk about politics. But in every one of those, you look for it. They're asking this question, who is this man? You'll find a moment where Jesus describes the future, how there's going to be all kinds of prophets and all kinds of people and circumstances throughout human history. And for the last 2,000 years, what Jesus has predicted has come true. Everybody is asking, who is this man? And the way you answer that question affects how you live life. But as we draw near the end of the week, let's go back here and let's kind of bring it all in. As you draw near the end of the week. This question begins to be asked with more, more frequency. And Jesus, on that last night before he went to the cross, gathered his disciples together for what we know as the Last Supper kind of a last meal with his disciples. And it was a meal that's grounded in the events we talked about when we were early on in our walk through the Bible, is grounded in the last night that the Israel slaves in Egypt had in Egypt before they were delivered from slavery in Egypt. It was called the Passover. It was a holiday marking the fact that God delivered them from slavery and would someday deliver all of us from sin. So he celebrated this moment and even read in the conversation of that, his disciples were asking, who is this man? And hours after this, Jesus is arrested. Where? In the Garden of Gethsemane. By the way, catch the connection here. Jesus is arrested before he went to the cross. Where? In a garden. If you were with us at the very beginning of our journey, where did our journey in human history begin? In the Garden of Gethsemane. We'll see in a few weeks. 
it all leads to another garden. Gardens in the ancient world represented relationship, represented being close. And as like we talked about last week, whenever you see a garden here, it's saying God wants to be in relationship. He wants to be in the middle of our life. And so here is Jesus just before he goes to the cross. He's arrested. And where is he? He's in a garden. And the religious leaders have a mock trial, and the question is asked again, who are you? Who is this man? And finally, he's turned over to the Roman regional dictator, Pilate, and he asks the question, and he turns Jesus over to the soldiers who beat Jesus. They put a crown on his head, and they're saying, aren't you the king? Aren't you supposed to be someone? What are they doing? They're saying, who is this man? Every moment in Easter week, you find people asking this question. And as you read this week, watch how many times the question is asked in different ways. Who is this man? And then we come to the cross. And the cross is near the climax of the entire story, the, entire, the entirety of human history. And on the cross, it's page 378 in your books. We're given a description of these moments on the cross says, two other men, both criminals, so catch this, there's three crosses, Jesus in the middle. That's why often you see three crosses represented there. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. And when they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with other criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. You catch this, right and left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Let's get a lower story perspective, and I'm just going to warn you. I'm going to do my best not to be too graphic, but the cross is a graphic picture. You get this picture. Jesus is hanging, bleeding to death, the skin on his back and on, on his torso. There was virtually no skin that wasn't at least bruised, if not ripped off, the muscle ripped off, tendon and muscle and bone exposed from the lead-tipped whip that had been used to beat him within an inch of his life. And now nails have been driven through nerve clusters in his wrists and in, and in his ankles and causing a paralysis, scientists tell us, across his chest where it was slowly asphyxiating him to the point where he could not breathe. He couldn't even speak or exhale unless he pushed up on those nails, feeling his, his flesh tear in those moments. And as he pushed up, slivers would be driven into what was left of the skin and his back and into his bones. And this, the pain of this, the, the death on a cross was so bad that the Roman world invented a new word to describe it. It's the word that we get the word excruciating from. Excruciating means out of the cross. And it was in one of those moments when Jesus pushed up on the nails, <coughs> excuse me, the nails in his arms and in his legs that he says, Father, forgive them. And notice what he says. They don't understand. And he wasn't just talking about the ones who nailed him there. He was talking about you and me. And I think he was looking into history. And he was saying, they have no idea how destructive their sin is. They have no idea how awful sin is or the price of sin. They keep minimizing it. They keep justifying it. Father, forgive them. They don't understand. And here is Jesus on the cross. And even on the cross, we see the same question asked and answered in a variety of ways. Pilate hangs a sign above Jesus saying he's king of the Jews. Right statement, but not the complete statement. The crowds and the soldiers yell at him to save himself if he really is who he is. In other words, show us that you are who you are. Who are you really? Who is this man? Finally, when Jesus dies, the captain of the guard watches the sky turn dark and declares that he must be the Son of God. And during all these events, the scene kind of zooms in in the, in the stories, and we see Jesus hanging between these two thieves, these two criminals. And the Bible tells us these are criminals. They deserved to die. And we see these moments play out. It's page 378 in your books. 
378 and 379 in your books. It says, one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. He said, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. You catch what he's saying here? Who are you? Who is this man? I reject who you say you are. But the other criminal rebuked him and says, don't you fear God? Since you're under the same sentence, we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, you catch this? Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Now, for some of you, that phrase right there, even though you've read it hundreds, maybe dozens of times, hundreds of times, whatever, it has causes you a little bit of struggle because you, you look at that and you, say, and you say, wait a minute, Jesus said this man, this criminal is going to be with him in eternity. But he didn't say the Billy Graham prayer. He didn't get baptized. He's probably never been to church. He's never been in a small group. What was his Bible reading practice? Let me help you with this. When your theology disagrees with Jesus, your theology is messed up. Because Jesus in the moment answers the question that we're asking. What did this man have to do to deserve eternity with Jesus? And the answer is he did nothing to deserve it. He simply answered the question in the right way. Who is this man? And he asked Jesus to be the Lord and the forgiver of his life. And by the way, this is an upper story kind of moment. From an upper story perspective, in this moment on the cross, Jesus is showing us how heaven sees us as human beings and how we need to see one another. The, the cross is the dividing point in human history, but the cross also is the dividing point of humanity. The cross teaches us that there are only two kinds of people who live right now, who have ever lived or who will ever live here on earth. And it's an upper story truth. It's an upper story perspective. There are only two kinds of people. Catch this. Sinners and sinners who have been forgiven. Notice. There's no difference in the first word. We are all sinners. The difference is what we did with the question, what we did with the cross. You can look at your neighbor if you've got someone close to you right now and say, you are a sinner. You feel encouraged? If you really want to have some fun in a moment, look at them and say, you're an awful, no good, stubborn, messed up sinner. Now look at him and say, but you know what? You can be forgiven. So the upper story truth is there's only two kinds of people, sinners and sinners who have been forgiven. But the upper story truth connects with our story, my story. So let's go to my story. <clears throat> because in my story, we've got to ask the question, why does the cross matter? Why does the cross matter? See, the cross declares to all of us who Jesus is and what Jesus does. Here's what I want to do. I want to put a cross here on the screen, and we're going to write some words around it, above it, below it, on it, and to the side, just to help us illustrate this. So one side is going to represent one thief, one side the other thief. One side is going to represent sinners. One side is going to represent sinners who have been forgiven. But Here's what I want us to do. I want you to write above the cross these words. I forgive you. Jesus on the cross said this to everyone on the planet and everyone in human history, past, present, and future. I forgive you. But, but, don't miss this. Jesus said it, but not everyone has been forgiven. You say, wait, 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 Jesus said, I forgive you. We've all been forgiven. Why? Because Jesus offered it in that moment, but not all of us have received it. 
Not all of us believe that he actually is capable of forgiving us or that we need his forgiveness because why? It all is determined by how we answer this question. Who is this man? This is what I want you to do. On one side of the cross, on the left side of the cross, I want you to write the words, Jesus is Lord. On the other side, write the words, Jesus is not Lord. And that's the dividing factor in human history. There's only two kinds of people in the world. Those who answer the question that Jesus is Lord and those who say, that's not who he is is. And I know, I know, we want to say, that's kind of narrow-minded, Mike, or we want to say, but I don't belong there, I'm there. I believe Jesus is God. You may believe Jesus is God, but do you believe that he's Lord? In other words, have you chosen to make him the leader of your life? You say, but I believe in God. I don't believe it. I don't belong on this side. And the answer is, yes, you do. We'll talk about that in a moment. Or I haven't done anything deserved to be on that side. And the answer is, yes, you have. Here's a question for us. Have you ever sinned? Have you ever done anything that you know was not and is not according to God's best for you? And of course you have, right? So have I. And if you have, you know what? The first word that describes all of us is true of you, because it is. You are a, here's the word, sinner. You're a sinner. And the truth is, none of us have only sinned once, have we? We've all sinned. And because we've sinned, if he's not our Lord, write this on the right side of the cross, we are separated from God. You say, that's not fair. I'm not that bad of a person. And, and what do we do? We begin to compare ourselves to other people. I brought two bottles of water. I got two bottles of water here. And... Uh, these are going to help us understand this. So one of these bottles of water, what I did is I opened it up and don't get grossed out. I went to the men's bathroom here at our campus in Williston and I got an eyedropper and I got about six drops of water from one of the toilets in the men's bathroom. And I just put it in this one and then sealed it back up. Anyone want to drink? Of course not, right? Because why? Because it's not clean. Now, do you want to drink of this one? Uh, before you say yes, let me tell you what I did with this one. I didn't put a few drops of, of toilet water in this. And what I did is I emptied about half the bottle out into, into that toilet. And then I got a toilet brush and I, and I swirled all that water around, mixed it up with the toilet water. And then I reached in and refilled this bottle, out of uh, half of this bottle out of all of that toilet water that was mixed in. So here's the question. Which bottle do you want to drink of? And of course, the answer is neither of them, right? But, but this one is more pure than this one, right? This one doesn't have as much impurity as this one. You say, well, both of them are impure. Yeah. And that's the point. We don't want either of them because the amount of impurity doesn't matter. They're both gross. They're both impure. And that asks the my story kind of question. It's not on the screen, but it's just a question for you. How much impurity do you think God should let into a perfect heaven? And, and most of us would probably answer, well, just about my amount, but, but not more than me. I mean, I'm not ba that bad of a person. But here's the deal. If God said... I'll just let a couple drops of impurity into my presence, then by definition, he ceases to be holy. And if he ceases to be holy, he ceases to be God. And if he ceases to be a holy God, and that means he ceases to be perfect. And that means we cannot trust that everything he does for us is good because he's no longer good. He's imperfect. And that's why on this side of the cross, sin separates. But on the other side of the cross, the left side, we write forgiven by God. Because what God has done is he's 
if we invite him, he empties out all of us and scrubs us clean in that moment. He pays the price and then he refills us with himself. And he continues to clean us as we need it, continues to offer help as we invite him to be in the middle of our life. And, and here's the question we say, so why, why do we need to be forgiven? And the reason, if you want a reason for forgiveness, all you need to do is look at the cross. You can't get past the cross. And here's the my story truth, and this is on the screen. The true damage of your sin and my sin is revealed by the costs of the cure. If you've ever watched The Passion of the Christ, you know it's the crucifixion scene is incredibly difficult to watch. And people criticize it, saying it's gory, it's awful. But the truth is, scientists tell us, archaeologists tell us, that what Jesus would have experienced on the cross is actually far worse physically than even what that movie depicts. Can you imagine? But the awful reality of the cross wasn't just that Jesus underwent excruciating pain on it. In fact, when you read the gospel accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the cross, it talks very little about Jesus' physical pain. In fact, the gospel of Mark, all it says is they crucified him. But what they do talk a lot about was the fact that Jesus, while he was hanging on the cross, experienced a spiritual and an emotional pain that was far worse than that physical pain. The Bible tells us that while Jesus was hanging on the cross, he experienced the full weight of every sin from every person in all of human history. Now, I want you to think about this. Think of your own life, the choices you've made, the mistakes you've made, and just the feeling of shame and guilt and regret that you experience. Now add that experience to my experience, to that person that you know's experience, and every person in the past, in the present, and in the future. And all of our experiences, all of our shame, all of our guilt, all of our brokenness, all of our pain, for all of our lives throughout human and history, all of us. The worst sins, the smallest sins, and then add up all of the emotional pain, the loss, the separation, the broken relationship, the scarred kids, the messed up marriages, the tragedies of hate and wars and prejudice and bias and evil. And think about this, the one who had never sinned became that sin for your sake. He had never known anything but purity, and he suddenly became impure. He became the definition of impurity for you. You say, why do you need forgiveness? All you need to do is look at the cross and realize just how serious sin is. We may not understand it, but the cross reveals how bad it is. And when you accept Jesus as your leader and forgiver, forgiver, what you're doing is you're experiencing him cleansing you. But even more than that, he's giving you another promise. And here's another dividing line. If we're forgiven, we have the promise of heaven and eternity with God, free from all of sin's mess and impurity. One day, everything will be restored. And it's not just floating on a cloud. Life with purpose and creativity and joy and meaning, continuing to learn and grow and live the life that deep inside you, you know you want to live. Life at its best, what we say, you're living your best life now. You will never be able to live your best life now, but you will in eternity. But on the other cross, on the side of the cross, is hell, and that's the result. And if we reject him, if we answer this question, we don't believe that he is Lord, that's the consequence. And I know no one wants to talk about hell, and neither do I. But my not wanting to talk about it doesn't mean it's not a reality. Hell is real, and the Bible talks about it and says it's real. And here, listen, listen, Jesus does not send a single person to hell. You choose it. When you choose to not have Jesus in the middle of your life, what you're doing is you're saying, I want to separate myself from life. And if you want to be separate from life, Jesus with a broken heart, because that's what happened on the cross, his heart broke for you, will say, I'll give you what you want. You don't need to have me as Lord. 
and the only place in all of time and eternity where you can be separate from Jesus because he is life is hell. And the cross, this Easter week, those moments on the cross, every story on Easter week tell us that ultimately it's our choice. The cross is the dividing line. The cross reveals the choice. And so if you want to write, uh, write up on the cross or underneath the cross, write this question, who is this man? Who is this man? Because the truth is, how you answer that question determines which side of the cross you're on. And I know some of you say, it's too late for me. What if I've messed up too badly? Look at the man hanging next to Jesus on the cross. As long as you're on this side of eternity, it's not too late for you to say, Jesus, will you be my Lord? Will you be my forgiver of sins? Will you be my Savior? I don't deserve it. I can't earn it. I'm simply asking for it. And you can pray that prayer right now. Jesus, forgive me of my sin and help me to learn what it means to follow you as the Lord of my life. If you pray that prayer right now, if you want to pray that prayer right now in the chat, you can ask for someone to pray with you or you can simply text to this number. We'll put it up here on the screen. Our team's going to come back in a minute in case you miss it and put it back on the screen. Text this number and we'll help you with that decision. Or if you prayed that prayer, we'll help you know what's next. Because it's the greatest question you'll ever ask. So let me pray for you. Jesus, on this Easter week, help all of us to answer this question in the way that will change our life and change our eternity. God, that's what I want more than anything else for everyone who's watching us this Easter week, who's joining us this Easter week, is that all of us would know the answer to this question and to experience your forgiveness. So I ask right now that you would be with every single person watching us. And Holy Spirit, that you would help them to say yes and give them the courage to let us know so that we can help them in their journey grow closer to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, church. Again, we're so happy that you've joined us today, and we hope that you found today's teaching valuable and that you're encouraged to take a next step. Yes, and there are so many next steps that you can take, and yeah. we really believe that God is laying one of those next steps on your heart right yeah. now. And for some of you who are joining, maybe your next step is to take that first step and say, I do yeah. believe that Jesus is who he says he is, and yeah. I want to put my faith and trust and follow him. And today you've made that decision. Yeah. And if that is you, if you made that decision today, we are so excited for you. As your church family, uh, we want to say welcome to the church. Mm -hmm, family. Yep. Uh, we just want to come alongside you to encourage you, to pray for you, uh, and to say we are so glad that you've made that decision today. So one thing that you could do now that you've made this decision is to text the word NEXT to the number that's down here on the screen, but it's 701-501-8002. And we want you to do that for a couple reasons. One is we would love to know your name so that we can uh, be celebrating with you, so we can be praying for you. Uh, but also when you text that number, you'll just come uh, across some great resources. There's a Bible reading plan, uh, just some more information about what do I do now that I've made this decision? Uh, just some really great things. So make sure you text that number. Let us know so we can be celebrating with you. But we just know uh, right now we are celebrating with you. Yes, we're we rejoicing are. with you as you've made this decision today. Yeah, and another next step, step that we like to talk about is our podcast. It's mm -hmm. called The Grow Podcast. Mm -hmm. comes out Monday mornings at 6 a.m. So if you're an early riser, check it out. Mm -hmm. It's on our YouTube. Um, you can also find it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. But uh, it's it's a podcast where David and Pastor Mike, they, uh, they kind of, talk in conversation mm, of, so um, and go a little bit deeper into uh, what the message is about the, on, on the past Sunday. And so uh, we encourage you to check that out and uh, it's, it's a great next step that you can take. Yes, and next week is Easter. It's Easter. So I encourage you to come back for Easter. Yes. It's going to be really good. We're at our normal times, 9.30 and 11.15. Yep. And don't come alone. Make sure yes. you share the service with a family member, friend, coworker. Uh, share the service so that they're able to worship with us next week and hear the really good news yeah. of Jesus Christ. So let's go and be the church. Thank you.